anyway, like I said earlier, I will post um, the recording, the video tomorrow. I'll send you a link. I'm going to post it on my uh, my YouTube page that I'm starting. I haven't totally officially started yet, but it's going to be on there. And then I will also send you a new handout, same handout, but at the very end, I kind of clouded over a couple of things because I wanted you to guess about them today. And so I will clear those out and send you a, an official uh, handout tomorrow. So anyway, um, does anybody have any questions as we begin? I mean, just- I have one question, oh. Sam. Yes. How are we able to, from your handout to, focus on a picture and blow it up like on our iPad or something? Yeah. Yes, that's why I was saying when I wrote to you yesterday, I really recommend that you, um, uh, there are pages, well, first of all, you know, there's pages that have the pictures larger, but I would get on your computer or your iPad and get on these and then expand them so you can see them better. Okay, um, great. Give me a little grace. They're not all perfect by any means. Uh, <laughs> but but oh. still, you'll be able to see the examples. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's why I said that yesterday on what I asked <clears throat> you, because there's so many. And in my printed copy, I can't see the details at all. So today, I'm going to be holding the cards up to the camera, and you'll be able to see them better. But if you get them on your computer, you'll be able to expand them and see them. Does anybody else have a question before we begin? Amazing handout. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Ann. I appreciate that. You so, worked hard. What? There, you worked very hard. There were a lot of cards examples. That was great. Yes. I know. I, I kept making cards and making cards. And Dan, my husband, he goes, how many cards have you made? I'm okay. like, I don't know. And then when I counted them, it was like 64 wow. cards. I'm like, holy schmoly, that's a lot of cards. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, that's what happens when you uh, when you retire from a job that you're super busy at and you're used to being super productive and busy, busy, busy and, and you have nothing to do. So it's like, just make cards. So, well, you know, if you ever have a place you need to send cards to, we've got lots of people. Well, I do actually, so. that's, that's the goal here is that to do these at the end of the month and then all those cards are going to be shipped out to people because what's the use of making cards if not going to bless right. you with them. So there are two um, things that I volunteer with, you know, Operation Gratitude where they send packages to, to Yeah, I have, I have other, you know, outlets for that. So uh -huh. that's my plan is to get into this, um, rotation where I do this at the end of the month and then all the cards I make get sent out so that um you know so I can bless other people with them and that's the whole point anyway isn't it? so so anyway let's get started I'm going to share the screen oh I wanted to introduce Penny Penny wave it there's Penny up there is everybody here hello all it's really I'm, and I'm just going to help out by, um, if there's a the link or something, I'll try and put it no up in the chat. Wait, 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 Penny, because I'm going to mute everybody. Uh, the evening, uh, it's it's too noisy. I apologize for the fact that we have to do it, but that's just part of this process. There we go. Okay, now, Penny, unmute yourself and... Okay. Um, hi. <laughs> Welcome to Sandy's show. Um, <laughs> and we have... As you heard her say, uh, she and I started the Alton New program at the same time. Uh, she finished in last fall and I finished in uh, April. And so now um, I'm just here helping her out and trying to man the chat. I'm admitting everyone as they come in. So if there is a question, feel free to put it in the chat. And um, if there is a specific link to something that you're looking for, I'll try and find that link for you. So um, I'll do my best and turn, I'm gonna mute myself again and uh, turn it back over to Sandy. Great, thanks Penny. Where would I be without you today? <laughs> I really appreciate it. Of course I co-hosted for Penny with her last workshop too. So. It makes it so nice when I don't have to try to monitor the chat. I couldn't possibly do it. So 
I'm going to share my screen now and um, share change cameras here. And let's hope that it works all right. And there we have it. Okay, so this is where we start because the biggest thing about any of this isn't all the things you can do with them. It's figuring out what sandwich works for you with your 3D embossing folders because every die cut machine is different and every one you're going to have to figure out what sandwich works for you. Because even though I have a Gemini Junior, what I have heard works for other people, guess what? It doesn't work on mine. And the one that they have in the Gemini Junior manual doesn't work on mine. The cards come out cracked or whatever. And even some people say, well, spray it with water. I have had a lot of trouble with that myself. So. I don't have a perfect solution for you, except to keep trying different layers with your machine and until you find one that works. So I will tell you what I discovered, which was something totally accidental for me. And I discovered that it works and I've been doing it ever since. Um, so what happened was um, one of my Gemini cutting plates broke. And um, I was waiting for the new one to come and I wanted to use uh, one of my 3D folders. So I thought, well, what am I gonna do? Well, I used to have a big shot. So I got out my big shot cutting plates, which is this what these are. And, um, and I thought, well, I'll give it a go with the big shot ones. Well, guess what? The big shot ones are a little bit thinner than the Gemini Junior plates. And I discovered, lo and behold, it didn't crack the paper and it didn't do any of the things that I was having trouble with before. So ever since when I do 3D folders, um, I use my Gemini plates and it works great. If I have something, uh, this looks really beat up, but if I have something really uh, kind of detailed, I'll, I'll use a metal shim in with it. Oh, look at that, looks terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but they work great for me. So if you're having trouble with my situation with a Gemini Junior and you have big shot plates, you might wanna try it, but I can't tell you which ones are going to work for you. So you're just gonna to have to experiment. But what I do want you to realize is that, and I think you might've seen like, like uh, Jennifer McGuire and some other people that we all watch are out there. Um, I want you to get out of the idea that you have to, there's only one right method with your die cutting machine with this. Um, there isn't one right method. There's one right method for you. So feel free to experiment with different, different ones and see what, see what works for you. Now I am gonna share with you something totally different that has nothing to do with 3D folders, but I saw this on, um, on a YouTube from somebody, I don't even remember her name. That's terrible, I should be giving her credit. But on my regular Gemini plates, here's what I found online. Look at my cutting plates on here. Can you see how, how um, clear they are? They don't have scratches all over them or cuts on them. Well, guess what? Here's what she told in her, in her video, she substituted and put a self-healing mat in on top of her cutting plate. So you put your die down on this instead of your cutting plate and then use a metallic, for me, I use a, a magnetic shim and then this, and guess what? The cutting all goes onto, this, onto the mat and not only do your plates stay flat, but they don't get all scratched up from cutting. I mean, how cool is that? That's, that's really cool. I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? I just got the little, I just got the little, um, you know, it's like from when I was sewing and quilting, but it's just a really tiny one. And I got it from Amazon for, I don't know, six bucks or something. And, um, and it is just, done great with my regular die cutting. So I wanted to share that with you too, in case you want to try it because um, it, it, 
has really made my plates stay flatter. Can you see that? Yeah, they've stayed flatter and they don't get all scraped up from, from cutting. So, and I've used this a lot and you can see the mat is pretty, you know, it's one of those self-healing mats. So um, I- black, Meg, black, your black mat, your magnetic, that's not the Gemini. It's not design. the official one either, you know yeah. why? Because I got oh. really, really, those kept bending on me and getting all Oh work. yeah. I've replaced those things so many yeah. times. It's so this actually is practice. this actually is new. So I don't I can't guarantee it's going to work, but I thought forget it. I'm trying a different brand because I'm sick of the way those always work. Yeah. So, um, but even with using the old one, the old magnetic one with this, it still worked really well. So I I was just surprised. I thought, why have I not thought of that to use one of those self healing. Uh, mats and it works really good. So, um, Penny, maybe you know what? If you can uh, find one of the right size mats on Amazon, maybe you can put it in chat just in case anybody's interested in trying it for themselves. So, Andy, anyway. yes, I also saw a hack where the I believe it's the Olga brand of quilters cutting mats. Uh huh. The green ones that you yeah. see in Michaels and all the stores, those also work. I found that yeah. on the hack. That's the and same it's, thing. It's the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Cutting pads. Yeah. So I was, that was just a big deal to me because I hate all the way it gets all scraped up and everything. But anyway, so moving right along, just to tell you, you need to figure out with the 3D folders, you know, what works for you. And, um, so that's the first thing. And that's the most important thing because otherwise you'll find that it, you know, the paper gets cracked or whatever, and that is no fun. So I also do use 110 pound uh, cardstock most of the time. However, as you saw in the, in the brochure, um, I've done it on colored cardstock, which is not 110, which is just about 60 or 80 and and it works fine so anyway let's get started because otherwise we are not going to have time so the first category and the easiest is just to use and i know you've all done this to use 3d folders as backgrounds for different kinds of uh, different kinds of focal points and it just adds so much more uh, depth and dimension. This one has the waffle diamonds on it. And I just did some, used one of the coloring stencils on here. Um, but these are just samples that I've made with this. But you can see even with printed images, look how pretty that looks with this around it. So experiment on these things because uh, it doesn't always have to be white either. Here's one with black. And can you see the, the one? Oh, I'm sorry about my finger. I got banged yesterday and the band-aid came off. So I'll try not to use it. Um, can you see this up here? It adds so much dimension behind any kind of image, whether it's you know a die cut or a colored image. Here's the one I made for the release of the glitter paper. Are you ready for this? Glitter, glitter, glitter. <laughs> but uh, I used the, um, the waves one on the back, the I think it's called ribbon waves on the back of with black and it just it just adds so much. So I just want to encourage you try different things. This is the organic linen that I used on cream cardstock. This was also for a release of I think that's the tree peony. So I don't know. It just seems to really give your card another oomph, you know, just lift it up a little bit. And then this one, again, with black. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, and this is the one that I did um, with Zentangle. Um, so anyway, those are just some examples of different ways to use the most basic of basics. But then, we need, then what we need to do is talk about these folders. And I gave you a lot of examples for that too. The first one is to ink 
the folder. Oops, my washi tape is doing funny things. So I'm going to show you how to do this in a minute. But this one is an example of inking the embossed side of the folder. And I'm going to show you the difference here in a minute. So can you see that this is light green in the background? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is the white. This one, I did the same thing. It's There's green with the white. This one, I inked the, bat, the embossed side with um, embossing ink. And I wasn't real careful. I mean, I didn't really care that it got on the flowers. I just wanted it to be kind of a uh, blended look. And so then I used some of the Caribbean blue um, embossing powder to heat emboss it after I did that. that so this, this is putting embossing ink in the folder. And I'm going to show you how to do it here. And this one has... Uh, a dye ink in the background. The card we're going to make today, this is exactly what we're doing uh, with that. So we're going to put dye ink in the background on the embossing side. So you can see the variety you can, you can get with that. So let's look at that. Okay, so here's a folder. And I've got some card stock here. This is the um, book cover engravings folder. Now, here's a hint. There's two sides when you open it up. There's two sides. There's a side called the embossing side, and there's a side called the debossing side. Now, what does that mean? Embossing raises the, like on these cards, the embossing side is the part that is the part that stands up above the you know, like the flowers here are embossed. If you flipped it over and the flowers were going down into the, into the paper, it would be debossed. So you really don't need to worry about the technical um, definitions of that. But what you do want to know is that when you open these up, the embossed, the embossed side of it is the one on the Altenew folders is the one where the name is. Now, all of the Altenew 3D folders have a name on them except for the first couple. Um, when they first brought them out, there's no names on them, but uh, all the rest have names and they're all on the emboss side. So this is the emboss side and this is the deboss side. And so you can tell by what's raised up here, the background is all raised, and here the flowers are raised up. So if you want your ink to end up on the background of your, let me put a dark piece of cardstock behind this here. Let me get a piece of black. There we go. Okay. Sandy? Yes. There's a question also about adhesive, and you might be getting to it, but I just want you to address what kind of adhesive you use when you're using the embossed folder. Adhesive, you mean I'm, to put I'm behind them? Right. Yeah. Yep. To, to put behind them? You can, you can use whatever you want once you've done the panel. You can do... Um, you know, foam tape, or you can do double-sided tape, or you can use liquid glue to glue them onto the panel. It doesn't, into your card, it doesn't really matter. It's okay to use whatever you want. Okay, and we're gonna have some examples, I think, of that. So anyway, now looking at this, on this side, the flowers are raised up. On this side, the flowers are sunken and the background is raised up, okay? So, you just want to say in my card, where do I want this ink to show up? Okay, do I want the ink to show up inside the flowers or do I want the ink to show up on the background? So on this example, we're just doing the background. So now let's talk about ink. All right, um, I'm sticking with all new products because this is technically all to new workshop. So the inks that Altenew has, the most, the best ones for this I found are the mixed media inks. That's because they have a kind of a pigment ink with them. 
Um, pigment inks work better for this than dye inks, even though today in our card, we're gonna use a dye ink. So it, it's not an all or nothing. So what I would say is that pigment inks work better. Distress oxide inks work really well. And I'm not using them again because I'm focusing on Altenew, but um, because they have a pigment element in them, just like these do, um, they work better than just your standard dye ink. However, you can do it with your dye ink. So don't eliminate it, but I'm just saying, and I have found that these, these Altenew products work really well on this. Um, unfortunately, they don't come in a lot of colors, but, um, but they do work really well. So that's why you see some of mine with a light green background because I've used this. Um, the reason is that when you spread it on here, this is thicker and it sticks better than a dye ink would. Um, so you just have to put more dye ink on it to make it work. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna do this with the ink pad and just draw it across here. Just keep on going until it's covered pretty well. I'm gonna slide this over. And this is what you would do with dye ink too. Now, Jennifer McGuire and some others use brayers. I have tried using a brayer. It's not my thing, but um, it doesn't work all that wonderful for me. But, um, you know, if you want to try using a brayer, go for it. I don't know. It's probably me being clumsy or something, but it doesn't work as well for me. Now, we want our background to be light green on this. We don't want the flowers to be. However, like on this one where I did the pigment or the embossing ink on the background, I kind of wanted it to be kind of, I didn't want it to be stark white flowers and blue background. So I didn't really mind that some of the ink got onto the flowers. Here, if I want to clean the flowers off, I just use a Q-tip and go in. Sometimes I'll get it a little wet. Today, because we've got so much to cover, I'm not being terribly picky, but do you guys get the idea here? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yes. You can just color off what you don't want. But I'm gonna run this through and let you see what this looks like anyway with part of it colored and part of it not and see what happens. So I'm just gonna put it in there, just as simple as that and get my plates. Really easy, super easy. Okay, so now if it isn't as colored as I want it, I can just do it again. Now I can see it in there. Can you see that colored? Probably not. I don't know. Can you see? It's pretty light. Maybe I ought to do it with the um, next color up, the forest. The light, light. is making it kind of hard. I have yeah. a question for you. I'm, I'm experimenting with something of doing the, 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 the you know, the um, embossing ink and uh -huh. then the coloring to see if that helps the color stay longer. Have you tried anything like that? I'm just trying to be creative. Doing what? I use the embossing ink yeah. first, and then I'm using the um, color just to see if it sticks better. Have you no, tried that? No, I haven't. I have not tried that. Well, then I guess we're going to see what else. <laughs> That's great. I just was trying to think outside the box of what might work. Okay, yeah. let's see. Now, if you want to do it over, it's super cool because you can feel on this side where it was. You just kind of... Um, it's hard to explain, but there it kind of locks in. Okay, so now let's see what happens. Of course, when I'm demonstrating it for you, something will go amiss, so you know how that <laughs> is. So now you can see that better, I think, can't you? And because I didn't clean out the flowers, yeah. you can see that some of it came, but look at how pretty that is, even with it in the flowers. Real pretty. It looks really pretty and it's super easy. So that's the first way. Let me get a, um, let me get a 
baby wipe. I'm going to wipe off my. So, like I said, you can use any ink, including embossing ink, where you can um, heat emboss it afterwards. Um, or to try distress oxides. And today we're going to be doing it later with a dye ink. And it just wipes off really easy with a wet with a baby wipe and you're done. Okay. Andy? Yes. I just want to show you what I did with your, your tip there. Yeah. Through my head. So I put the embossing ink down and then I use a brush thing and then I put the color down. So cool. I'm trying to try that. I have never done that. Before. I was trying to think of a way <laughs> to make it yeah. a little bit thicker. Yeah. I kind of got my camera here. There it is. <laughs> trying to put it Great. So that's not I just wanted to show you that because that was like cool. So thank you. I just want to show you the way okay. that I adapted it. Sorry. So the second thing is to deboss. I mean, is to ink up the deboss side of the folder. And I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to explain it to you again. This is the emboss side. When we inked it, it went onto the background around the flower. This is the deboss side. If you run your ink over this, it will ink the flowers because they're raised, but the flowers press in. So it's not the top that shows up, they are submerged. So you see how this is? This is from inking that deboss side. So the inside of the flowers gets the ink and they're, and they're impressed into the paper. Can you see that? Yes, that's beautiful. So, so if you cool. if you want this look where you want the flowers to be colored that way, you ink the deboss site, which is the one not with the well, not with the name, the other one where the flowers are raised up, and then when it gets pressed in, the ink gets pressed into the card. So that's a totally different look. But it's pretty cool looking the way that it it does that, don't you think? I mean, it's just different. It's awesome. Yeah, so that's way number two. Okay, I use the same inks and the same and the same everything on this one and look at how different it is. So what I did with this one was, I know it's on the background, so you think, wait a minute, it's on the background, but it's on the deboss side because these are all pushed into the, this is on the deboss side. Well, what is it? I inked this after uh, on the deboss side. I know this deboss emboss thing is really confusing, but let's look at this one again. I ran it through without any ink, all white. It came out all white and the, and the flowers that are debossed in here that go down, the flowers were all white, everything white. But then what I did was I took my ink pad on the white flower card and ran the ink pad over the card. And because these were not on the flat surface of the card, the ink came out on the area in between the flowers more than the flowers. Did I explain that well enough? Yes. Did everybody get that? <clears throat> yes. Okay. So that's another completely different way of doing it is to ink the card afterwards. So this is what it looks like when you ink the deboss side, the side where the flowers are in the card stock. Let's look at what it looks like um, I'm going to I'm going to do something else here. Here's number 5 on your thing. This is taking a panel and ink blending it. Um, wait a minute, why do I have this? This one, I took a panel and I ink blended the panel and then I ran it through. So instead of messing with the folder, you just use ink blending tools, ink blend a plain panel and then run it through and it looks like this. You see oh, that? Okay. So you got, you got a choice whether you want to ink the folder or ink the card. And on the folder, 
you got the embossed side to ink, in which case the background gets inked. And on the, on the folder, you've got the deboss side in which the, the sunken flowers get inked. And then you've got the after effect. So there's before and after. And that's why on your handout, I kind of highlighted the words before and after and card or folder because there's so many different ways to ink them all and have it come out a completely different look. I mean, it's so versatile. So here you've got where I inked the panel with ink blending tools and then ran it through. So that's that one. Are we clear yet? I mean, are you guys following? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay, so now I have a ton of examples of what happens if you have a panel like this and you just take an ink pad and you run it over the top. So let's do that with something. We'll just do it right here with this hydrangea ink right here that I have. It's a, it's a um, dye ink. And all I'm doing is lightly running it over this. And I can do whatever direction I want. I can add a little bit more if I want. And you can see that, and you can see what that looks like. It's just inking after the fact. And you just do it, you can do it with ink blending tools, but you can also just do it with, with um, an ink pad itself. So these have all been inked. Here, let's do another one. Cindy, could you try zooming out just a little? You might, you're going in and out of focus a little. So maybe if you zoom out, it'll focus. No, now you're close. Zoom out far. It should, you it should adapt. Okay. We'll see. Are my fingers in zoom? I mean, in focus? So let me zoom out a okay. little bit. Yeah, that's better. Right there. Is that better? Okay, we'll so here I've got blue, and I'm just kind of inking just a little, just to kind of highlight. the edges. See how easy that is? I'm not doing anything fancy. And look at that. Just that highlighting, look at how awesome that looks. It's just that easy. Run, the, run it through plane and then do that. So now let me show you some cards that are made that way. Just inking afterwards. This is the ranunculus one. I'm trying to see where it's focused there. Can you see that? Is that oh, that's I love that card. So I just well, did it with some pink ink, ink and I just ran it over the top, just like what I just did. And you can see that there, you can see the highlights and it just looks so pretty and so soft and it's that's so cool. easy. Mm. This one, I used gold. <laughs> That one was so creative. Oh, thank you. I used gold pigment ink on this and just ran it over the top and look at how it highlighted the upper grid of that, Gorgeous. of the um, mod, mod squares. Now this one is a double one. This one, I inked the background, the embossed side of the folder with the yellow and I ran it through and then I did lavender over the top. And so you can see the blending of it. Mm. What do you That's think about awesome. that? Beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. So, but how easy is this? Beautiful. You just ink the ink the folder, run it through. It doesn't have to be perfect. The illusion is there. Then come over with another ink pad and just, you know, do that highlighting with your little ink pad, and that's it. Mm. And, Sandy. And, yes. I'm sorry, could you name the embossing folders as you use them? They're um, in, they are in the handout on the right hand okay. side by every card. It tells you all the, all the details. Great, thank you. Oh, I think I used in this whole thing, something like 35 embossing folders. So I can't remember <laughs> all of them. Okay, so this one I did on colored paper 
And then I went over it real lightly with black. Or, and can you see that? How it kind of has oh, a shadow. Oh, it's wow. gorgeous. So all of these are the same exact technique. That's why I'm trying to show you different ones so you can see. This one is also on colored paper. And I went over it with white pigment ink with the ink pad, just like what I just did, just highlighting it in places. That's I, I love this one. I think it's so pretty. Yeah, me too. Yeah, That's pretty. my favorite. But again, look how easy this really was. All I did was put this through again, find the right sandwich. That's the big deal. Find the right sandwich, put it through on white on your paper, which was the blue paper, ink it, put a sentiment, you're done. You know, and, and it looks, I mean, if you got this card in the mail, what would you think? Love it. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I mean, it what, looks what? like, oh my gosh, what did they do? That looks amazing. Well, it's so easy. Okay. I forgot your name I, I and I'm so sorry, but my Panama friend, you were going to say something. What were you going to say? I saw you flash up. Sorry. I, I think it was me. I was, I was, I was okay, Angela. I was just going to ask the one with the deepest Matt sympathy C. card. With the deepest sympathy card, this one? I was just going to say the black, did you put that with an um, ink tool or was that with the stamp? Because it's very, very subtle. I think, you know what, I think on this one, I might have used an ink blending tool. Now that I'm looking at it, okay. I might have, but it's very subtle, isn't it? It's very yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy. And then this one is a man card. Oh, yeah. So this one I did after the fact, I swiped it really good. I tamped it, swiped it with the embossing ink. And then I used... Uh, let's see here, copper embossing powder. Um, and then that I one, use, and then I use. They want to eat chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and then I used um, copper uh, metallic paper to cut this out of. Again, all the, all the Elton new products are listed on the, on there. And then again, I don't like having just, if I leave this much of a margin, I don't like just leaving it plain. So I use the cross stitch cover plate on there. Can you see the little holes? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. And just to add some texture so that it wasn't just plain cardstock on the side, because I left quite a bit of a um, quite a bit of an edging on this one. So anyway, this is my man card that's going to be going out to somebody in September who I know is having a birthday. So so what do you think so far? Love them. Great ideas. Great ideas. Okay. One Wonderful. Card, one card is just more, as beautiful as the next one, Sandy. Oh, thanks, sweetie. Well, you can do it too. This is not rocket science. This particular thing. Some things we deal with, you know, um, are, are more difficult, but this is not so difficult to do. Okay. So the next one is inking the card with blending brushes. And you're so right. I probably should have put that sympathy card in this one. So this one is inked after the fact with green ink. And I just took blending brushes and you know a large blending, blending brush and just inked it and then put my colored focal point on top of it. This one, I use the detailed blending brushes. Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? These yes, ones, I like this one. These blending brushes. Mm -hmm. They're the detailed blending brushes. They're little. And I just took dye ink and, uh, and used the detailed blending brushes to, to do that. Now on the stems here, yeah, I use those for that too, actually on this one. Okay, this one, I use the detailed blending brushes to do the blue sky after I ran it through the machine. So I ran it on white cardstock and then I colored in this with the blue, the blue with the blending brushes afterwards to make the sky. That's cool. Okay, this one, you don't have to ink the whole thing. I just <laughs> inked a center section to be behind the, the sentiment. 
vocal. And um, yeah. and there you have it. And this one, I inked the whole thing afterwards with green and, um, you know, just used it as a, as a leaf background for my little floral focal point, just for fun. So that's inking afterwards, inking the card after. Okay, rolling right along. Here's two cards you may not have thought of using. Okay, this one, can you see the shimmer on this? I don't know oh, if you can. Beautiful. Yes. Okay, this is white cardstock, believe it or not, that I just ran through with white. But here's what I used on it. And there's a link in the, I linked it to Amazon for you in the handout. If you do it on your computer, the link will go through. Oh, I've got some of that. So I this just... is metallic gilding polish. So uh -huh. what you do is you just take out the, if I can get it out of here, come on. Well, I'm not gonna worry about it right now because it doesn't seem to wanna come out, but there's a little sponge applicator in here. Or you can use them, or you can use a makeup sponge. You just get it a little bit damp. And this stuff is really, really, really strong. So you do not, boy, I can't even get that open. What's up with me today? Okay. Well, anyway, it's a paste. And this will last you like forever if you buy it because you don't use very much. But that's what I put just plain over white cardstock. And it gives this beautiful sheen to it. Can you see that? I don't know. It's so hard yeah. on the camera. Yes, you can. It is a gorgeous sheen. I mean, it's so beautiful. Pushed. Yeah. It's beautiful. And it comes in different colors. So that's another way to accent it. This is different too. Look at this. What do you think I put on with this? Oh. Iridescent spray? Yeah, no. I used mica powder. Okay. So like perfect. Pearls. I don't even know what like perfect pearls. Here, I got out some blue to put on this just to show you. I'm just gonna put a little bit of blue over here on my work surface. Perfect pearls, or you can get generic, mine is generic, off of like Amazon, mica powders. They're a, they're a um, metallic uh, powder. And you put them on with a little brush like this. I'm just dipping it over here on the side. You can't see me, but now let's get that in focus. And here I have this flower, see, that I ran through on light blue cardstock. And you just put it on like this. It looks pretty messy to start with. And I don't have time to really mess with them. Flowers are absolutely beautiful. I love them. I'm to really, kidding. you know, I don't have time to really mess with this, but you put it on with a little brush and then you wipe it off with a big brush. You can put some more on it if it didn't do as much as you'd like. And it has a metallic sheen to it. So you just put it on like that. And then if it gets any, now let's see if you can see this. It's got a metallic sheen. I don't know, maybe the light blue wasn't a good choice for me to demonstrate but it, it makes it really shiny metallic. And if you get it into your background, all you have to do is use a Swiffer, you know, a little Swiffer duster cloth and wipe it off. So let's see if that shows. Can I ask you, does your brush have to be forever dedicated to the mica then, or does it clean? Yeah, up? well, I don't know if it does, but mine is. I bought this again on Amazon, a double brush, you know, for five bucks or something. But yeah, yeah. so it, it makes it a real metallic shine. So you can see on this one, on the dark cardstock, the way that it makes it shine. Beautiful. So, you know. I did my brush to it too, because everything else gets shiny then. <laughs> You know, the thing is, this is what I was trying to say at the beginning. You have the one main thing with embossing folders is just running them through. And then you've got all these different ways of highlighting them to, to make them look different, which I think is so cool because it's all basically the same 
you know, it's all basically the same. So now moving on to watercolors. Okay. Sandy, Sandy, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Some mica powders don't have a bonding agent. Uh, so when you put it on. Oh, yes. Hello. Thank you so much for correcting me. I feel like an idiot because yes, you do put embossing powder. I mean, embossing ink on it before you do it. Why did I not think of that? Because I'm, my brain is 15 steps ahead of where I am. So thank you. Did everybody hear that? So what's the okay. process then? Let's go back over it. Thank you. You take, you take your this and you put embossing ink on it. Okay. Okay. After, so you, you take your embossing powder. ink pad and just run it over it. And then you put your mica powder on it. Hello, I know that, but just, if and then you, just do you use heat it? Um, mica powder, you can spritz water on top and that will hold it also instead yeah. of using the, the yeah. Versamark. I did use the Versamark ink. I used the embossing ink on it. I'm sorry, please forgive me for forgetting also, that. You can also use food grade glycerin um, and spritz it on there to hold, hold that mica powder still. Cool. Well, anyway, you can use the mica powder on the embossed folder. So now watercolor. Okay, on this one, what I did was I took, this is a different folder, but I took the folder and what I did was I did watercolor. I just got a watercolor wash and just did this whole side of the folder with watercolors. Made sure it was really wet and everything. And then I ran it through wet like that. And can you see how it turned out? It's, uh, like, a, it's like a watercolor wash on it. And I watercolored the folder, not the paper. So not everybody likes that look, but I think it's kind of pretty. This and is that watercolor paper or is that just normal? Yes, car? this is watercolor paper. Right, okay because I, was, I got it really wet to run it through and I was worried about putting it on cardstock. But anyway, that looks pretty, huh? Yeah. And did, you wet, did you wet the card as well before no, you put it in the embossing no. folder? No, I only wet the, the, um, the folder. Just got a really wet watercolor wash on there with plenty of color because it turned out pale anyway. And uh, you know watercolor, it dries lighter than Mm -hmm. than what it originally looks like. So this is pretty dark ink on here and it came out on the pale side. But anyway, it's really pretty, I think. So watercolor the folder and then run it through. This one I ran through and then I sprayed it with the um, ink spray, a couple of the ink sprays. And it had, these have shimmer in them. So it's pretty shimmery and it's just a different look, different way of doing it. And this one I ran through and then I watercolored on top. Now, the reason this looks kind of different than regular watercolor is because I got, I don't know what, whether you'd say creative or, or crazy afterwards and thought, I wonder what would happen if I put some of that gilding polish over the top of watercolor. So that's oh, what I did. So it. it has a pearlized, it has a pearlized gilding polish over the top of the watercolor that I did. Wow. That's so great. it looks really, um, I don't know, my husband saw it and said, oh my gosh, what did you do to that? That looks fantastic. I'm like, well, are you sure it looks good? He goes, oh my gosh, it looks fabulous. I'm like, well, okay. It was just a spur of the moment idea. So, so anyway. Find, when yeah. you're polishing, do you have any trouble keeping the polish to the um, item? Does well, you know what? This whole card is polished. You can't see it probably, but the whole thing so is polished fine. with the pearlized. I can yeah. see it here, but yeah. um, uh it actually takes on top of this bright color even more. So I don't, I'm not an expert on gilding polish, but I, I really like but the way that looks. Yeah. So I just did the whole thing and I put some extra on here. You know, I just kind of did a, a little bit more 
um, second coat kind of thing. And I just kind of, the thing is, is that these are raised up. So it's not real hard to keep it, especially if you use like a makeup sponge and you just kind of put it on the little areas, mm -hmm. you know, but Very uh, nice. I love so that. These, these three are three examples of watercolor. Spray the spray the folder. I mean, use a watercolor wash on the folder before you run it through. Of course, all this is in your handout, so I don't expect you to remember it. I'm just giving you examples so you can see it. Watercolor wash the folder beforehand. Paint the flowers afterwards, which is easy because they're raised. And use ink sprays after you've run it through. So I don't know what it would look like if you did ink sprays before you ran it through. That would be another experiment. Okay, are we all in one accord still so far? Very nice. Okay. Yes. These are examples of alcohol inks. Okay, alcohol ink after you run it through. This one, Alcohol markers, I should say, not alcohol inks. This one I just kind of highlighted around and I did the leaves. I used buttons for my embellishments just for fun. And um, so, and I just did the little lines, you know, no big deal, just easy, easy. So that's that. This one is one of the new ones they came out of, out with, and I used alcohol markers to just pick out that star in the middle and color it. Oh, that's so, that was so creative. And, um, you know, I just had fun doing it. It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. And I got it on some of the white. So what I did was that I used a white gel pen and just went over it and it covered it up and it looked okay. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, it was a little hard in some areas, but I just used my artist markers to do it. And then this one, I wanted to look really celebrating. So I colored the balloons with alcohol markers. Then I, then I um, uh, did, what am I trying to say? I did an anti-static tool on it. And then I used embossing ink on top of the balloons and clear emboss the balloons. Can you see the shine there? Yes, yeah. Right? Great. And then I cut the cinnamon out of black and because this was shiny, I went and put um, glossy accents on top of the happy birthday. So it, can you see it shine too? Very nice. Does that pick up? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so anyway, alcohol markers, ways to be inventive with them after you've run things through. Can you see how versatile these things are? Yes. They're, they're really yes. versatile. They're really very versatile. You could just let your mind go crazy and, and see where <laughs> it leads you. See what you think these things inspire you and make something with them and send it to me, would you please? I don't want oh. you to do the same thing as me. I don't want you to copy me and be me. I want you to be inspired and say, what if I did this with this folder? And try it because you know what? It's a piece of paper. If it doesn't work, that's okay. Try again. Okay, this one, I like this card. I don't know why I do, but I do. This one is simply taking stamps, stamping the flowers on white in my Misty, you know, just doing the same stamp around. And then I ran it through the, with the Baroque 3D afterwards. Oh, just to give it some texture. Oh. It looks like a painting. Yeah, so look at how Dude. cool that looks. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, and I just thought, hey, I wonder what would happen if I tried to do that. And look oh. what happened. It's just really pretty. It's so, so don't be afraid to try it. So take a piece, of, take a panel, stamp something on it, anything, and then run it through with a folder and, uh, and see what happens to it because it just adds so much um, character and texture and just that extra oomph to your card to make it like stand out. You know what I mean? Okay, 
Are you are you okay? We're running through this at high speed, you guys. Are you all right? Yep. Great. All right. Okay. Great. Stencils. Here's the first one with a stencil. So what did I do? I did the same thing that I just did with the stamping with the purple one a second ago. I did a stencil on a white panel with just regular ink blending through it. And then I ran it through with the 3D embossing with the mod squares one. And look at how cool that looks. Now see on this card, you have a lot of white space, but, but that isn't just plain white now, it has texture to it. So again, it makes the card kind of raises it up an extra level of um, complexity and it makes it look very, um, I don't know what the right word is, but it looks a lot better than just on plain white. Can somebody come up with a word for what that looks artistic, like? Artistic and stylish. Okay, well maybe, mm -hmm. but you know, see it, 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 it does something to it. These texturized Classy, things. it's classic. Classy, is that what you think? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, now this one I used the exact, exact same Mod Squares one, but what I did was I did this stencil, which is the Quilt Square stencil, and then I ran it through by itself through the Mod Squares. It was on a bigger piece, you know, like I stenciled in, in a piece of white cardstock like this big. And then I put that whole big piece into the wow. into the 3D folder and I and I embossed this and then I cut this out, trimmed it on my paper trimmer into the square. Then I ran a separate piece through a bigger piece through like a six by six piece of the white. And then what I did was I took the square and I saw where the pattern was in the square and I lined it up on top of the bigger white piece so that they all lined up. So can you see how this these lines line up across the whole card? Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's what I did. I cut a bigger piece of white. So I had a whole big piece to work with. And Leave then it I put, to a sewer to know how to do that. A seamstress or sewer would know how to do that. Yes. <laughs> And I do have a lot of seamstress yes. history to me. So then I would, then I put the square, I had a lot of white to work with. So I found the place where I could cut a, a panel out the right size where it matched up. And then I cut it out and then I just put it on with some double stick tape on there. And there you have it. So down here, what I did was I took the matching alcohol ink markers to what the inks were that I used in this. So these are alcohol, uh, these are Altenew artist markers, so they match the Altenew inks. So I did a just stripes across a um, white piece of cardstock with these colors. And then I just took the hugs die and put it kind of at an angle so it kind of comes through with all these different like striped colors oh. and cut that out and cut That's a so piece of foam behind it so it sticks up so there's another stencil idea for you you have done that with glittered cardstock strips i've mm -hmm. glued them on a piece oh that's paper. a good idea okay and now different. this one and again these names of these things are on your folder or on your handout, I did the stencil. I mean, I did this one, I did the 3D first of this tile 3D that they have. And there's also a tile stencil. They don't match perfect, but I didn't really care. I wanted to try it out. So I put the tile stencil on top and I did the coloring <laughs> afterwards on top of the 3D. It looks great. The pile stencil. It looks terrific. Which was just, you know, like one of those, I wonder if that would work kind of moments. You <laughs> know? And then I ended up liking it. So you just never know, do you? You just have to kind of say, what if? What if I tried that? 
So I want Sunday. you to be inspired by all these what if moments that I had here, right? Sunday. Yes. Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you me. Yes. Um, yeah, the, um, uh, I think it was um, Lydia that mentioned about the stencils uh, are best for flat stamps. So uh, when, when you use them on the embossed um, image, you just have to shuffle them around a bit. I'm, yeah. I'm trying that out right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you just have to hold it around where you're, you know, this was not like, um, what am I trying to say? I had to, I had to really, and I had to tape, like mask the stencil so that I made sure I didn't get excess ink on the white parts in between and stuff. So I did have to play with it to make it work. Um, because they're not made to do that, but it worked. You know, I did have to play with it a bit though. So, but I wanted to show you that you can do the stencil first and then emboss it, or you can do this, the embossing first and just try your hand at putting ink through a stencil and see what happens. Either way, you know, your choice. Okay, so here's another idea for you that was just out of the clear blue in my brain. What I did was I ran it through on colored, this one I think is called floral and leaves or something. It's one of the first ones. I ran it through um, on turquoise paper and then I used a gel pen and just outlined the whole thing. Oh, wow. And there you have it. Beautiful. You know, so now it was a little time consuming, but it wasn't that big of a deal because all of these little lines are impressed into the paper. So you're really just following the pattern. You're not really, you know, making up floral lines yourself. I think I put a few extra little lines in there because I thought it could warrant it. But really, you're mostly just outlining through the, the you can see here how this is sunken and you're just going in the pattern that it made and around the flowers. And then here I had to put um, a few layers of the gel pen and it still wasn't looking right to me. It looked a little muck, muddy. So I put some of that, um, some of the glossy accents on top of these big white parts, the centers, and that did the trick. That made it look really, really white in the right way. But again, it's a little time consuming, but it's easy. What do you guys think of that one? That was great. That's gorgeous. Yeah, so there's that. And we're moving right along here. The next one is, I think it's number 16, is to die cut part of the panel out to make a focal point. So on this one, I ran this through and then I used a circle die and I put some um, pattern paper behind it. And I just wanted to do something kind of, you know, bold colors a little bit. I, I did some splashes with some black ink around here and um, simple, but don't think you have to keep these all whole either. You can you can do something like this and cut a piece out. On, on that one, did you cut the circle first and no. then run it through? No, I ran it through and then I cut the circle. Because I've had, it, I've had it before where it kind of smushed the embossed, uh, the embossed picture or whatever. Yeah, no, I you know what? Now that you're saying that, maybe I did run, maybe I did cut it out first and run it through. I think I did. I'm getting crazy here. Sorry. <laughs> what, what I've done, what I've done is rerun it back through if I cut yeah. after it's in Oh, good idea. Yeah. Back through. Good idea. I was wondering if it would get crushed. Yeah, and it can. But but anyway, there's that idea. I'm trying to get through all this. Then the next thing is very cool too. I like this one too. How you can cut it out and make a focal point out of it. Oh, do you see oh, that? Yeah, I love that. 
Now that one, I did cut the heart first and then I ran it through. I put it on the flower the way I wanted it in the, in the folder. And then I ran it through to get it exactly the way I wanted it to come out. And look at how pretty that is. And I, I, put, I put craft foam behind it. This is a, this actually is a, um, a background uh, stamp that I did in the baby pink color. And then I used the, um, pink, the pink buttons as, a, as embellishments again. So don't forget, you can, you can, you know, make focal points out of these things and make them be the, instead of being the background element, make it be the focal element of your card. I really like this one. I love that. Yeah. So there's one example of it, but the other example is you can use it to make tags and things like that. Same process. This is just on silver metallic paper. This one I did, I did the little fine washi tape and then cut out that and then ran it through the brick. You see that? It, it, I ran it through the brick um, um, embossing folder. This one's sort of floral like that heart I just showed you, but it's in with metallic paper and I just made a little tag out of it. And this one, same way with glitter paper. Ooh. So remember that you can use them as backgrounds, but you can also use them for these kinds of things. That is great. You know, you can just use your own creativity and figure out that. And we're moving right along, you guys. Okay. This one is, what is it number? Number, um, number, I don't know what. Number I will 18. Show you. Should be number 19, I think. 18. This one is using uh, debossing plates or cover dies and combining them. So I use the cross stitch die first. It's a cross stitch canvas die. It makes those little dots like that other one that we had a few minutes ago. See those little dots in there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I ran it through with the embossing folder. So it gives it like double texture. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Nice, that's very that. nice. Love it. Okay, so that's with that one. Then this one has this one, this debossing cover die. And this card is near and dear to my heart, so I'm going to show it to you. Uh, okay, I'm going to show it to you in the next one too. It, it, it's a double, a double whammy. But for this one, we're just going to look at I embossed it or I debossed it, and then I ran it through with this floral embossing um, embossing folder, and I. Uh, did alcohol markers on the coloring of it. And I'm gonna talk about this in a minute in the center. But just to show you, you can do like these debossing things and then do an embossing folder on top of it. And wow. it gives you that double textured look. Wow. Does that make sense? Beautiful. Yep. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna talk about this one again because you can fussy cut out images. So, what I did on this, because it was just an experiment, but what I did was then I ran, after I did this, I, the center flower was white. And I thought instead of coloring it, I think what I'm gonna do is find some floral pattern paper, and then I'm gonna run it through the embossing folder. And I did, and then I fussy cut the flower out and just glued it in the middle. And, um, and I think it looks kind of cool. <laughs> you can see that That's it has the, can, you, can you see it has the texture in it of the flower? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just different looking. Well, can you see there how it's embossed? Yeah. That's really clever. Yeah. And then I just did the, uh, with, I don't know what this new one's called, window That's pane stuck. or something. Anyway, on the background. But here's another one that I fussy cut out. It's the window slats. Thank you. I know I have it on the handout. <laughs> um, 
I fussy cut this one out, these flowers, and then I put them on an embossed piece of cream cardstock um, that I did with the organic linen folder. So again, embossing on top of embossing and cutting, cutting the flowers out. Mm. And then I put the whole thing on another uh, piece of kind of gingham paper. So I have to say, fussy cutting is not my thing normally, but these are easy to fussy cut. It's easier. The reason is because yeah. there's that imprint there. So you can easily cut around them, much easier mm -hmm. than you think. And um, I like the look of that. I just use some little ink blending tools to color it just really lightly. But what do you think? I love that. Love you it. think you're up to Beautiful. trying some fussy cutting? I'm so not I a needed fussy cutter, to. but <laughs> what? I'm so not a fussy cutter because of my hand situation, but it is well, just Great. I'm not either. I have arthritis in my hands, but I also, I use these. Remember we talked about these last time for you guys that were at my last one. I use um, the Tim Holtz nonstick right. scissors. There's three sizes and I use these for doing that. And my hands make it through okay, even with my arthritis. So, so I have, um, you can't see what you can, these little foam thingies. Uh -huh. um, easy hand, easy hand and they can go on. And then it makes it easier so you can just grip your fingers in like this. Oh, well, that's good. So I use it for all my painting brushes as well. For anybody who has arthritis, please let me know. And I feel happy to share the information. <laughs> <laughs> like it. So it. this card is also a double duty card. The first part of this card is you can use your embossed area for just part of the card. You don't have to use it for the whole card. So here, I, what I did was I cut the panel of green and I ran it through the embossing. Then I cut the panel of the flamingo paper and I, I cut the panels exactly the same. And then I stacked them on top of each other and diagonal cut through both of them at once so that the cut would be at the same place in both panels. And then I just took the top and the bottom from the two panels and matched them together and then did some florals for the top. So you don't have to make your embossed panel be the whole panel, right? Did you fussy cut the greenery? I No, that is the... Oh, okay, I'll look I, on the sheet. Look Sorry. and see. Tell us, Penny, yeah. what this is. I think it might be the vase fillers, uh, stamping, and dyes. Yes. Is that's that what it is? is? Yeah. So now what this is also an example of is sanding. Can you see down here how this has some brown showing through it? Yeah. Okay, so what I did, you can do this with either either craft, paper, uh, well, um, specialty paper that has craft on the inside, like there's an inside core of craft or on the backing is craft, or if it's white. So this one is craft. And what I did was I just took a little piece of a little sanding block and just sanded the top. And then the craft color shows through. Ah. So it gives it more texture. Now, this one I did with the white just for a fun card, I did it. And this has white core in the in this cardstock. So I split the panels the same way I did that other card with three colors of cardstock that had white on the inside. And then I sanded it. And you can see that the white shows up from the inside. So it gives it a real kind of rough but textured look, but it it's kind of cool because you didn't put ink or paint on the outside, you're actually sanding it so that the, the white paper comes up from the inside. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Okay, Tina, you're doing great answering me because I need <laughs> feedback from you guys. Okay. Okay. And then I used the rippling rings die because I thought it kind of went with it to highlight my my um, vertical 
sentiment. But anyway, I, I made this one just for fun, but also the cool card, you know, just to just to show you how you can do that sanding. And that's another technique that you can use them with. Look at how many things you can do. Is this not cool? I think Amazing. it's so cool. Amazing. Okay. This on one I used, <clears throat> this one I used this. This is called merging two pa papers together. Using the embossing to make lots of different papers or two papers or however many papers merge together so they look like they're all one piece, but they're not, they're all patched. So here's this. Ooh. Ooh. So what I, I did like was I, than... I did pattern papers and card stocks and did the inlay of this with the different colors. But then what I did was I ran the entire piece through the organic linen. Oh. Uh, and look at how it looks all merged together. It yeah. looks like one whole instead of a bunch of pieces. It really so, does. And that's, that's a cool card. You know, yeah. that's the idea for merging is to put, it, you can glue like shapes onto a back panel, you know, cut out little shapes and glue them on like, you know, four or five hearts and put them on there. And then when you run it through one of these, it wow. pushes them together and it makes them look like they're all one car, one piece of paper. That's cool, isn't it? That it would is. be neat. that would be neat to do with letters for a. Oh um, yeah, yeah, that would be. Neat. That would be very cool with lettering. So this one, now this one, I did the same thing. You can't really tell, but I did the same thing with these circles. See how the circles are glued on, and then I ran it through the um, the wood wow. plank. Wow! To make it look rustic. Mm. And then, um, but this is an example of double embossing because you can't see it on here too well. But the wood plank is just these just these horizontal lines. All mm -hmm. of this in here is that organic linen. So what I did was oh. I, I did the organic linen first and then I ran it through the this and it's called double embossing. And of course this did the merging of these circles onto here of these Good little uh, you know patterned patterned uh, paper circles, but um, it's double embossed. And you're gonna see that more over here on this one. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Did you uh, die cut it and put it inside the die cut or just glue it on top of the existing paper? I took those circles and I glued them on a plain piece of paper. On the, the same way the landscape? I took these, I, I cut out with a, I didn't do it with a die, I did it with a punch. I cut out these yeah. circles out of some pattern paper. Then I just used liquid glue liquid glue and glued them to this like turquoise paper and so it was just flat just three circles on a paper piece of cardstock okay. and the then i ran it through the, was that the same process like putting on top of a card a paper yes but then i ran the whole panel through the organic linen cards uh, embossing folder and I ran the whole panel a second time through the wood one so it came out very textured even on these so rather than just three circles glued onto a flat piece of cardstock look at how that looks I wanted it to look real rustic yeah that's See? cool wow so now this one has the same that concept. Really nice. I like that combination of the um cut outs which I designed on it already uh-huh <laughs> Nice. Now this is double embossed too. Oh, that's so pretty. So the mm. rule with double embossing is use your finest or smallest pattern embossing folder first, and then do your larger pattern embossing after. So I used that, um, what was that? Window slats or something? Window slats, yep. And you can see how when I double embossed it, they flattened out a bit, but the pattern is still there. 
So I did those first, then I did the floral on top and you can see that it made these stripes in the background. So this is double embossed. It's been run through two different folders, one on top of the other. And then I did the white uh, pigment ink on top. So again, super easy card. Just take your cardstock, run it through with the one folder, take the same panel, run it through with the other folder, some white pigment ink, a sentiment, you're done. That's nice. Super easy, but see how that adds more texture? Uh, is Dalton you have white pigment ink? White pigment ink? No. Or is it no, else? they don't. So I use. I, I, I was like, I didn't see that anywhere. I so use Curio Arts. Okay, so now we're gonna we're down to going through all these different materials you can use, and you don't have to just do plain cardstock. So here's metallic cardstock. Oh, 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 this that's is a com pretty. This is a that's combination gorgeous. again, so easy. The metallic cardstock, lavender cardstock, had silver background, so. I ran it through the tulips one, and then I sanded it just like I did those others, and the silver showed through. Wow. So how cool does that That's look? And then I put it on a silver cool. background, and yeah. there you go. Again, so easy. Get yourself one of those. They're made for manicures, you know? They're just, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, little, so easy. I mean, it's almost, it's almost embarrassingly easy. Okay, so the next one is washi tape. And here's my washi tape examples. Here's number one, festive. This is the rainbow washi tape and I ran it through with a star folder. Now what you do is you put your washi tape on a piece of cardstock and then you just run it through like normal. That's and, great. And look at how that turns out. You see the pattern in that? I love that. That's, That's nice. Okay. And I love the use of washi tape on the vase. That was beautiful. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so here's washi tape again. It's the blue one with gold stripe or gold spots. And see, I ran it through with the, I don't remember what this one's called either, but geometric steps or something. See the pattern in it? That's yeah. so and then I, I just did this uh, on navy cardstock and to make a, a um, focal point for it. But I wanted you to see that it really works well. And this Ooh. one I absolutely love. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's pretty. This is washi tape. Simply wow. run through. Again, how much easier Gorgeous. does it get? Right. So I have an example here. I have an example here to do just so that we can see. Oh, it really does work. Okay, here's some washi tape. I love this washi tape. It's got gold in it. Oh, it's pretty. I did this for an anniversary card for some friends. Same thing I'm doing here. I'm putting it in here just like so in the middle. Now I'm going to run it through and you won't believe how it turns out. It's so easy. Sandy, Sandy, I have a question. Did, did on, you I can't hear you because of my diaper machine. Okay. Did, did you stick the washi tape down onto some card first? Yes. Okay. Yes. And that should be in the directions in the handout, I think. Yeah. Okay. You saw what I did, right? I just had that panel of washi stuck on white cardstock. Here's the white cardstock. I just stuck the panel on there. Look at the front. <gasps> oh, wow. That's so pretty. Is that pretty or what? And look oh, at how totally easy that changed. is. And then totally changes it. <laughs> you just oh. put the washi on the white card stock, run it through, and you have 90% of your card done, right? Right. Yeah. Does the washi tape stay adhered to the edges of the card really well? Well, I turn it around to the back. And then I use foam tape most of the time to put it on a back a back background panel. And mm -hmm. by putting the foam tape over it, it stays. You know, it can't come out. 
You know oh. what I'm saying? If oh, I put so foam you, tape back here. You run the edges around the card then. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And what I do is I cut the, okay, if I put here, let me get some washi tape. Cut the, the oh, base yeah. smaller than the washi tape. Oh, okay, I cut my panels to be four inches because I'm going to put them on a backing. So let me get a piece of cardstock here. Let's see how wide this one is and then I'll cut it down. Okay, let me cut this one down and I'll show you what I do. Are you guys all hanging in there okay? Yep. Love it, yep. I just in awe. <laughs> what? I said Absolutely. we're in awe. Oh, I don't want you to be in awe. I just want you to be inspired. Oh, oh awe and inspired. inspired. This okay. is awesome. <laughs> nice ideas. Nice ideas. Absolutely. Okay, so here is my washi tape. Sticky side up. Okay. So I'm going to put this down. This is a four inch panel. Glue it down. Mm -hmm. Now here's what I'm gonna do. Here's my secret. Miter the corners. So cut, <laughs> cut diagonal across the washi tape on every corner, right at the corner. Right. Like so. Yeah. Just like with sewing, right Sandy? Just like with sewing. Exactly. Right? And then, I should have already turned this over and and uh, done my my Teflon bone folder on it, but this I'm rushing. So see how nicely that folds at the corners when you cut it diagonal. Yes, mm -hmm. and That's then great. you just take your where's my bone folder? Here it is. So then you just take your bone folder and like so. Shall I run this one through too and see what happens? Yes, sure. I was just going to ask you to do that. <laughs> Okay, I'll use a different one. Let's see, I used the whimsical bouquet on that last one. We'll use book cover engravings because I have it out here. Okay, let's see what happens. That's amazing. Okay, you saw what I did. I just stuck it in there, right? Now yeah. again, the secret is find the right sandwich for you. That may be frustrating and it may take you a while to find what really works, you know, that's easy. We're all going to be playing once with Once you find the magic sandwich, once you find the magic sandwich, you can do all these things super easy. Okay, let's see what this one looks like. Isn't it fun? You just like, oh, I wonder what this is going to look like. I can hardly wait. <laughs> there oh, you wow. go. Wow, and how long did that take us to do? Oh, that's beautiful. Cool. Oh, my gosh. I can call that embossing folder. This one is the book cover engravings. Book cover. I mean, what, it took us maybe five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and look at how look at how that turns out. I mean, if you had, I was just thinking to myself that if I had really super cool Christmas washi, you can make a lot of Christmas cards really fast that look really good. Really? <laughs> you know? I was just thinking that you could do a lot quickly, couldn't you? Yes, you could. You okay. could do your you could do your lettering and then put it on a, a, a plain piece of cardstock going across it. Yeah. Like a narrow yeah. piece to put those colored letters on. It'd be gorgeous. Yes. Okay. Mm. This is another one that's similar. You can see it's got washi tape in there, but the difference is it's got vellum on top. <laughs> okay. So this steps up one more level if you want it to be more one subtle. More type. So you here's what you do. You put the washi on the cardstock just like we just did. Then you take a piece of vellum and you take your your double sided um, adhesive adhesive sheets. So I'm trying to look for one here. You know, like this, these or any brand, and you put the double sided adhesive on back of the vellum, and you, then you glue it to the top of the washi. So your little your little card panel has vellum that's attached with the double sided adhesive to the top of the washi, and the washi is stuck on the cardstock. You got that? 
Right. Mm -hmm. So it's vellum, washi, cardstock. Then you run it through exactly like what we just did. And this is what is this is what it looks like. This is with nice the organic linen. So it looks just a little bit more subtle. But look how pretty that is. Where's one that we just ran through? Here, hold on. I'm I've got them all piled up over here. What do I do with it? Here it is. Here's the one we just ran through. So you can see this is this is bright colors and this is subtle colors. So it just depends what look you want, but it but adding the vellum will make the washi toned down. Right. So you can get a different look with the same basic process. Mm. Okay. To try that with any pattern paper, actually. Holy moly, I gotta run through this stuff real quick. So okay, this is one of my very favorite cards, and I'll tell you how I did it. Oh, pretty. Oh, that's beautiful. Can you see that the acetate has embossing in it? Oh, oh yes. wow. Yeah. Wow. And it didn't crack. And it did not crack. Wow. Well, yeah. You try uh, die cutting and uh, like, uh, like the sheet you have, the black sheet. Uh huh. And it, I cut so it embossed just like that. Yeah. So, and, yes, ma'am. Is that regular acetate or like the heat acetate? It's not the it's heat stronger? acetate, it's just regular acetate, like what you would use on a shaker card. Okay, wow. Okay, so um, I don't know what I did with that panel. I also did the balloons one in it, but I didn't make a card out of it. Anyway, so the directions for this are in, the whole directions are in your, are in your uh, handout. But what I did was I ran this, this um, embossing folder through with two pieces of white cardstock. And, um, well, first I, okay, wait a minute, Sandra, back up. I took a piece of white cardstock and I cut the circle out. Then I ran it through with the embossing folder. And then I ran another piece through that was just whole with the embossing folder and I fussy cut these, these out. Now, oh. the reason I did that is because when you cut the circle through, this part of the embossing folder gets cut off. So oh. what I did was I colored these on the second piece with, with um, colored pencils, then I fussy cut them, then I glued them where they should have gone on the, on the main piece. Does that make sense? Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because these, on this piece, were cut off by the circle. Yeah. Oh, right. So I wanted these to be the focal point on the final card. So I, yeah. I ran them through on a separate white piece and, and did the coloring with colored pencils. And then I fussy cut them out and glued them where they should have gone on this piece. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. And then I did pink ink just highlighting on the top like what we did earlier and then I made it just like a shaker card even though it's not a shaker I did the I wanted to show you the acetate that you can do this on acetate this is real subtle I did not want this to be a big you know acetate pattern just a little subtle pattern I stamped the, the cinnamon on the piece of um, pattern paper on the back and then just elevated the whole thing with foam tape. So there'd be some, you know, some dimension there. Yeah, yeah. So but, open anyway, it. the directions are in your thing. Card? Yes, ma'am. Can you open that? No, I didn't make it a card. It's oh, just okay. a panel, but I will oh. glue this onto a card panel. Onto a full card. Okay. Onto a I full card. Just inside a card or inside the cover. I will do that on the front cover of a card of a card it's not very thick see it's very thin right so i'll right. just glue it on the front of a card and it'll be fine very nice so okay moving right along this one is vellum and you guys mm. have done this before i mm. ran the vellum through sometimes vellum cracks you have to be careful even heavy yeah. vellum will crack you just have to kind of experiment. But I just colored it on the back with 
my alcohol markers mm -hmm. and then um, use the double-sided adhesive to do it onto, um, to glue it onto some lavender cardstock. And there you go. But what I want you to notice is look at the ribbon. Mm. Oh. You can emboss ribbon. Wow. Okay, oh. so, yes, so let me show you. Let's see, I have a piece right here, ready to go. I put some satin ribbon, just use double-sided tape to put it on some cardstock. Okay, you guys are gonna get blown away with this. <laughs> Look at you. Watch this. I mean, I don't know. I was like, oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> oh, it doesn't take I much to excite me, right? <laughs> it doesn't take much to get me excited about something. Okay, here we go. Get it through. Okay, are we ready to see? Oh my gosh. Wow. Awesome. And all you need to do is cut it, trim it right on the sides of the ribbon. Wow. How cool is that? Beautiful. Cool. Oh my gosh. Pretty. I mean, like I said, I was like, oh my gosh, look at this. I wanted to try it and I didn't have any wide ribbon. So my husband was at Walmart and I called him and said, can you just bring me home some wide ribbon? You know, an inch ribbon uh -huh. and seven eighths, something like that. And wow. he said, okay. And I'm like, well, I'm going to try an experiment and looky there. That is yeah. beautiful. So anyway, enough said. Oh, what did you glue Great that tip. down? What, what, what did you do to glue it down? I used double-sided tape, you know, um, like, like, yeah, uh, like that, you know, just okay. regular double-sided tape. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know you guys, but now you see why I ended up with so much in that handout. It was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, let's try this, let's try that. Ooh, now this gosh. one I got from Vicki. Um, do any of you follow her on um, YouTube? Vicki Papadoni, I can't pronounce her oh. name. I put it's it, she's just, Greek. And I put it into the handout because I, I wanted just to give her credit yeah. for this. But what she did is she took a heavy duty, uh, a heavier piece of, pattern paper, embossed half of it, and made a mini slimline card. And I was like, oh, what a cool idea. So check this out. Oh, pretty. Isn't that pretty? Wow. And then I did this over here to cover up the inside of the embossing. And this particular piece of, of pattern paper had a perfect, this is all one piece of paper. It's just one piece of pattern paper that's thick. Wow. So you stick, you stick the half that you want to emboss like that, right? Or on the side like that, whatever oh. way you want it to go, then you run it through and it embosses that first, that front half. And I just thought, how pretty is that? And then you just fold it in half and you've got a mini slimline card. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. beautiful? So she gave me that Gorgeous. idea and I had to try it. So, okay, this is Tim Holtz um, patterned. This is Tim Holtz patterned vellum. Oh. So Ooh. it works on patterned vellum too. I put it on, I use the double-sided adhesive I put it onto a piece of cardstock. I ran it through the brick cardstock or brick embossing folder. And there you have it. Love that. And then I just used a button for the oh. that. But I wanted something kind of vintage looking, you know? Okay, moving okay. right along. Wait till you see this one. You're gonna like, what? Okay. This matches that other one, but this one is, this is the one you're gonna get excited about. But this is what I did was I ran vellum through and then I inked the back of it. Um, 
with ink blending tools and then I just, and then I attached it to cardstock. So it was inked after it was embossed. So that's not a big deal, but check these out. Oh my gosh. Do you know what these are? How these are made? Or oh. what they're made from? No. Oh. Made from tissue paper. Wow. Okay, this is Tim Holtz. Use any tissue right paper. Right okay, this is one of them. And then this is the other one that I used. So here's what you do. And I am prepared to do this. We shall see what happens. Okay, I want to show you how to do this. Now, I got this idea from Amber Rain Davis. So I want to give her credit for the idea, but I did something a little different with it. But the original idea came from her. Okay, so um, what I did was I took gel mat medium. And you may not be familiar with this, but this is kind of thicker. I should probably use um, use um, the liquid one, but I didn't have it. So you just tear off a piece of your, so let's say I want this bird on here. So I'm just gonna tear it off. This is really thin and you can cut it too, but I like having the rough edges. But we're in a hurry here. So I'm just doing it kind of haphazard. So I'm cutting out this bird. And remember, does anybody remember what we said merging is? Mm -hmm. what, yes. what did we say merging was? Take, taking a piece and putting it on the another. Right, so like that, oh, my fan is blowing my birdies. Um, so like with that, um, with landscape. that landscape card that we put all the inlays in and then we and then we um, ran it all through at once. So they merged the cardstock together, right? Yeah. Yes. So I'm gonna cut this down into a card size. And of course, one of my birds fell on the floor. Why do you have a fan in Alaska? <laughs> Why do I have a what? Why do you have a fan in Alaska? <laughs> 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 if it's personal you don't have to answer <laughs> well, we're all that age <laughs> yeah that's it is kind of personal but <laughs> oh yeah well Been there, done there. We're, all there. we're all there yes okay so you can take a paintbrush and do this, or you can do it with your finger. Now I did a paintbrush before, but I don't want to get a paintbrush all gooked up. So I'm just putting some of this gel mat. You could use, you could also use like watered down liquid glue. I'm just putting it on here. I'm gonna put my little birdie on there where I want my little birdie to go, the tissue paper. And then I'm just gonna put some more on the top. And just Sandy, kind of, would mod, mod, mod Podge be the same pretty much? Yeah, it does the same thing. Okay. I'm looking for some kind of little paintbrush I can use without having to get out. Here's a big paintbrush I have out. What the heck? We'll just go ahead and do it with the big paintbrush. Just like you're decoupaging, decoupaging, right? Same process. Now we're gonna put this one down here. You will not believe what this looks like when you get it done. Again, it's so easy, it's disgusting, it's so easy. You just put it on there. Okay, voila. Now, does that need to dry? Yeah, it does. So I'm gonna do something else in the meantime. Mm -hmm. I say you're off camera, so we can't see it. There we go. I'm just kind of drying it off there and I'm gonna leave it for a little bit. It doesn't really have to be totally dry. 
because I didn't let it dry too long before. It doesn't really make much difference. It's just kind of cool the way it works. Mm. Okay, let's go through a few more and then we'll go back and do this. We're almost done. Wow. So now we're on the section saying, what can you use it with? Okay, we said you could use it with vellum. You can use it with colored vellum. You can use it with tissue paper we're gonna see here. Okay, this was this is an odd looking card, but I wanted you to see the detail. This was some gold uh, specialty paper. It's not metal, it's not like metallic paper. It's like a thinner gold specialty paper. And I just like the way that that image came out. I'm not so sure I like this card. I was messing around. This is actually gold thread that I wrapped around really? it. But, um, but anyway, look at how that came out on this specialty paper. I'm trying to get it up close enough where you can see, can you see the background on it? That's all part yeah. of that paper. That's great. Like this wow. detail right wow. in here. Wow. So yeah. specialty paper. Uh, guess mm -hmm. what? Fabric. This is a fabric panel when I, come on, focus, there we go. This is a fabric panel that I ran through. I glued it with double-sided double adhesive sheets to cardstock, and I ran it through, again, using that mod squares, and it embossed the fabric just really well. Wow. I'm That's anxious strange. to try it. Um, I just had to use that watermelon with the your one in a million and a melon card stuff. I just thought that was cute. Okay. That's cool. So fabric. Liquid glue for the fabric? What? Did you use liquid glue for the fabric? No, no, I didn't. I used um I used that same double-sided adhesive sheet. They just work so yeah. well on everything. It does. Now, what do you think this might be? It's not cardstock. It's soft. Bone. 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 No, here's what it is. Yeah. It is well, block transfer sheets. Oh. Yeah. Wow. You see how my experimenting kind of went in all different directions? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I just cut a piece <laughs> off, put it on cardstock, ran it through, and it's flock and it's really soft and pretty. Can you see that? Urging. Beautiful. Okay. Let's see. Couple more, a couple more and we're done. Did you step stay up day and night for a month? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, this is what I said in the beginning and not everybody was in here, but this is what happens when you have a person who's used to a highly stressful productive job who retires <laughs> and suddenly has nothing to fill her days with. So <laughs> what can you say? Envelope flaps, people. Oh, yeah. love that. Right? Yep. How to, how to make an impression before they even see the card. Yeah. You just stick it in the inside and run it through. Wow. Okay, um, okay, this one is my grunge one. Some of you saw this online. Yeah. What is this made yeah, out nice of? Card. What is that's this made nice out of? Tin foil. Tin foil, aluminum foil. No. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm showing you. I knew you wouldn't believe it, so ah. here we go. Wow. Reynolds wrap. I, I Hi, you're that. laughing, but wait till you see the results. That is fantastic. Okay, I you can also, it. here's my card that I made ahead of time that I put the double stick on as soon as I can get the liner off of here. There we go. I did. There is some metallic um, strips oh, yeah. that you mm. can buy in the hardware department. And um, it does the same thing if you're only doing a smaller design. Oh, I did that for um, uh, children's craft, and it worked out absolutely wonderful. Hmm. Well, I would say, you know, go for it. Whatever you want to try, do it. 
Yeah. I'm just cutting around this again. We're in a hurry, so I'm not being too super picky. I just want you to show. Now you can also layer up like five or six layers of tin foil and just do the tin foil. But I put it on a piece of cardstock. So mm -hmm. wait to see how this turns out. You won't believe it. And you can do whatever you want with it. I just put embossing paste and embossing um, things with it just because I wanted to see what it looks like. And I'm not a grunge kind of person, but I decided to break out of my box and, you know, do something different. So let's do, okay, which one did I have out to do with this? Uh, Hey, let's do this one just for fun. That new illusion triangles one. Okay, here we go. It's like magic, isn't it? Okay, are we ready for the reveal? Yep. Focus, 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 focus. Here, come, come on, camera, you can do it. There wow. you go. Wow. How cool. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. Gorgeous. Oh my How cool God. is that? Just with plain That's aluminum awesome. foil. Oh. That is awesome. Oh. <laughs> Okay, now I, I have my two surprise ones. My last two. We're down to the final two, other than doing this one when we get done with the final two. Okay. These are my guessing game ones. I put the aluminum foil in there, but I didn't tell you what these were. I'll tell you what I did. I, I, I mystery material. I ran it through and then that? I sprayed it with um, the spray inks. So what yeah, is it? Toilet paper. <laughs> okay, this one is paper towels. Oh, oh <laughs> you were close. <laughs> well, guess what? Guess what? This one is toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> the green there. That is toilet paper, and this is oh paper towels. Gosh. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do it real fast. Wow. Here we go. Paper towels. And the and TP is the same way. I saw this online and I couldn't believe it. I just thought I have to do it. I, there is no, there is no way I'm not doing this. <laughs> so I put. It, it comes out a really soft, pretty texture too. You won't believe it. Okay. So I put three paper towels. I'm still out of focus. There we go. And I just folded them in half. Then let me cover up a few things over here. Then you spray it with water and you spray it pretty, pretty liberally. You don't want it to be totally like totally soaked, but you want it to be, yeah. you know, real wet on each side. Okay, so just like that. So now let's pick one. What embossing folders do I have out here? Okay, here's a floral one. I don't know what it is. Whimsical bouquet. Okay. You know, seeing is believing, so I have to demonstrate it, right? You do the same thing with paper with TP. You layer up six or eight layers of TP and you wet it on both sides just the same way, and it works exactly the same. A few months ago, we wouldn't have been using toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Oh, wow. That is lovely. Wow. That's, oh, that's gorgeous. I would be so to drop some watercolors on it while it's wet and then it oh that would be cool oh that? that'd be pretty that would be if you do that you try it and you send me these pictures of what you guys do because i want to see what you're inspired by and what you do with it i mean really now if you're going to do anything besides the watercolor idea which is fabulous um you let it dry overnight uh so that it's totally dry and don't use a heat gun it won't work well on it so just mm -hmm. lay it out, let it dry overnight, and then you can cut it with your paper trimmer and everything just like normal. Mm -hmm. How cool is wow. that? 
That's cool. beautiful. Did you use a double sided adhesive then? Yes. To put it on a cardstock? I did. I did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's that one. The TP works exactly the same way. Here's my roll of here's my roll of TP to prove it right here. <laughs> I told my, my husband, he's such a great guy. I mean, we've been together uh, 50 whatever years. And so he's used to me. And so I, but I said to him, can you bring me some TP into my card room? And he's like, why? And I'm like, I'm going to emboss it. <laughs> that was a little much even for him. He was like, what? I'm like, I'm trying all these things. What can I tell you? I'm, I'm experimenting and I saw it and I want to try it. So, and then, you know, I proved it to him and he was totally floored. He was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, let's put our birdies through as the last hurrah of my uh, examples. So remember what we said about merging, right? I'm putting yep. you through with the deck planks. little birdies it might not have been quite dry enough but can oh, you see uh, very so, oh. Oh, so this tissue doesn't even look like tissue it looks like it's completely now here I had a cut edge so you can kind of see it was cut but if you tear it and you put your goop on there mod podge or whatever it's gonna um, stay down it looks like it's merged right into Oh, that's awesome. Stuff. Which, Which that embossing pretty? folder awesome. is that? When? Which embossing folder is that? This is the deck planks. Deck planks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, guess love, what? It's already two it. hours and we didn't do our card. So do you want to keep going and do the card or do you want to just try the card on your own? I'd like to try the card on my own. Card on my own. Okay. I've got to go, I'm afraid. Sorry. Uh, but I uh, don't say time. sorry, uh, Paula. It's um, 11 o'clock at night very, for you, right? Nice you. <laughs> but I did okay. get oh, send me the picture. Send me the picture, sweetie. Good night. I, love the idea. I think night we all need, need to give a, 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 okay. a round of applause, Sandy. Thank you so much for yeah. all the inspiration. You. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, Listen, yeah, you guys. Really here's the thing. Let me get off of sharing my um, sharing my screen here so I can see you better. There we go. Okay, so before we go, two things, three things. One, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, whatever inspired you, send me a card, please. <laughs> I really want you to. I love seeing what you guys do. So uh, any anything, anything that inspired you today that you try, I really do want to see them. I will love them and appreciate them. Number two, I have the info for the August um, uh, workshop on August 29th for you in your handout. So if you're interested, email me. And number three, Miss Penny, my co-host, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Penny. Penny, can, yeah, you thank please, you, Penny. can you please pick a number between one and 79? Because I have a giveaway today. If I can reach it over here. Where is it? That's an awkward way to reach. Let's see here. Yeah, it's here somewhere. There it is. And if you have this already, I'll send you something else if you win. But um, it's the Whimsical Diamonds. You see that? Mm -hmm. oh, 3D embossing. So Penny, pick a number between one and 79. Penny, there you are. I can't hear you. 18. 18. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to do it when I get off of here. And so tomorrow I'm going to email you the updated... Um, the updated handout, which is the same thing, except I'm going to take off the cover off of the TP and the paper towels because I didn't want you to know ahead of time. Um, so I'm going to email you that. I'm going to I'm going to email you the link to the video that's going to be on my YouTube channel. 
Okay. And then I'm going to email who number 18 was, who I will send this to. And you need to send me your address if it's you. And what else did I just think? Hello, Sandra. Let you know about the class. No, I'm not, well, I'm, well, I don't know. What was it that I thought? <laughs> this is my age. This is my personal you issue it. here. You mm, I'll remember and I'll send it to you. <laughs> you know what it was? You know what it was? Remember last month, those of you that came, I sent you the, the this yeah. for your alcohol markers? Yes. Um, has anybody used it or did you find it helpful or? Very helpful. This is, if everybody can see this, it's uh, for my alcohol markers, how I swatch them. And I have yeah. a master sheet for them. So if you want one and you weren't here last time, um, email me or maybe I'll just include it again on the, on the handout. Okay. That would be great. That would be wonderful. Okay, so does anybody have any other comments or questions before we go? And now we're going to have another fabulous. Oh, you good. Thank you. I hope you're really super inspired. You have outdone yourself. What? What, Tina? You have outdone yourself. This oh. was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. I want you guys one. to feel like you can just take this and run with it. Like I said, figure out your sandwich and then go. Try everything and anything and you can do it. You can do it, right? I Thank think just so listening, just listening to all of us, you know, you could tell we were inspired the oohs and ahs of every <laughs> card that you brought up. <laughs> Well, thank you. You're very sweet to me, but I, you know what? I just want to be an encouragement to every single one of you that you can do these things and you just need to not be afraid to jump in and try stuff. I mean, who would try paper towels and TP, you know, right? <laughs> but you never know, right? So just go for it. And if it doesn't work, just move on and try something else because you can do it and you're going to do great and i want to be an encourager for you guys and like a cheerleader so i can't you. wait okay make new things send yeah. me stuff send me stuff and i will communicate tomorrow okay great all right thank guys. you so much thank you so yeah, much thank you, thank thank you for you. coming thank you for thank sharing you. with me thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you